Thanks for checking out this movie review. So we're going to be talking about the 1988 release Killer Clowns from Outer Space, which basically is just an alien invasion film, which there have been a lot done, but it does its own thing. It has its own twist on it, which when you're reusing something that's been used a lot, you kind of have to have your own twist on it to make it something interesting. Make no mistakes, this film is very light on plot. There, is, there really isn't much. I mean, there's a little plot to it. It's the whole uh, guy and girl, you know, love triangle situation that, that's thrown in there that just feels very, very minimal. Nobody cares about it who's watching this film. You're here for the clowns, and rightfully so, and that's how the film plays. So, spoilers. I'm going to be talking about all spoilers on this. So, if you haven't seen the film and you're watching this, turn around. Go watch it. Come back. It's worth it if you're just looking for a fun time. This isn't a serious film. You're not going to see this and be like, oh my god, it's amazing. Practical effects wise, you may say, oh my god, it's amazing. Because the practical effects still, all these years later, look so good, in my opinion. Practical effects. That's why it's important that people do that. So, this film, which I have on DVD because I bought it that long ago, has a fun tagline of, in space, no one can eat ice cream. As you can see right there. It's a good film um, for for fun. Like I said, it's not. It's not. There's no plot. There's no plot. So let's let's start breaking this down. This was done by the Kyoto brothers. Charles Stephen and Edward Kyoto are the guys who mainly did this. Now they're mainly known in Hollywood. Well, were mainly known back then in Hollywood for doing practical effects. Uh, they did some practical effects on this film, as you would assume. But uh, a lot of it was done by other people just because they were focusing so much on actually directing and do making the film. They wrote the script together, so it's written and directed by the Kyoto Brothers, which is cool. Um, I like it when, when the people who are directing actually also wrote the script because it means that what was on paper is more likely to translate better to the screen, in my opinion. So do, 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 what they did do practical effects wise was the final scene with Jojo the Clownzilla that whole scene uh they wanted to handle that so they did that and overall like what they did and what everyone else did the practical effects like I said are outstanding um one of the big things with this film is it's just a lot of fun to see what's next with the practical effects what are they going to pull out next what kind of like clown gag is next you know so, two of the clown masks from this actually don't exist anymore, at least two, because uh, I was reading up. Uh, they were repurposed and used as base masks to make uh, troll masks for the movie Ernest Scared Stupid, which, to be honest, I actually think Ernest Scared Stupid is kind of a fun movie as well. I, I, I was about to say, I might like it close to as much as Killer Clowns from Outer Space, but you also have to go into it understanding that it's more of like a kid friendly horror film although the trolls in that do look pretty horrifying like the clowns in killer clowns from outer space so um i love how they have a theme song for this film by the way the theme song is great it's by a punk man a punk band called the dickies and it's a lot of fun when you first hear it you're just kind of like that's ridiculous that's crazy and then when you hear it at the end of the film after going through the whole adventure you're like this is fun i like this song <laughs> Um, but then after that, it, it's like a lot of kind of like hokey, um, carnival-esque music. A lot of it's done on keyboards and that doesn't hold up, but the theme song holds up in my opinion. Uh, I like it early on in this, how they have like the typical hillbilly dude who goes out with his dog and his shotgun to inspect when the, when the, uh, big top circus spaceship settles in the middle of the woods. And that's one of the big things is uh, this guy, along with the kids uh, who show up, who were um, originally making out on, like, make out point, I'm just going to call it. It was called something else, but I can't remember at the moment. Uh, why do they think it's okay to, to, to go into and investigate this, this circus tent literally in the middle of nowhere in the woods? Like, it, that should be a huge indicator that this definitely doesn't look like it belongs here. We shouldn't do anything with this, which the main the main female character, Deb, actually says that, which I was happy, because a lot of these movies, they would just go with it. But the fact that there was one character who's just like, I don't like this, this doesn't look right, we shouldn't do this, is more true to life, 
Because if you found some weird big top circus tent in the middle of the woods somewhere, you would not go into it. I guarantee that. I know I wouldn't. I would just be like, turning around, getting out of here. Um, it's good that they don't waste any time in this film. They get straight to the clowns pretty much. And that's one of the great things about it is they get to the clowns and they stick with the clowns. The clowns stay stay there. Since it is light on plot, they don't take a whole lot of time to develop characters all that much or develop what the little bit of plot there is to it. They keep it with the clowns. They keep throwing out these clown gags, these cool special effects, and just like the clever comedic clown puns and otherwise that they throw into this film, which is always fun to see because it's, it feels like they just kind of keep like one-upping, one-upping, one-upping. And there really is this kind of building crescendo towards the end um, mainly driven by the, what the clowns are doing, their crazy stuff, and the practical effects, how they keep making it bigger and bigger. And, you know, the next thing, the next cool thing. Sorry, my cat's yelling in the background. She hated this movie because she does not like clowns. Like a lot of people in the U.S. population, very afraid of clowns. And Killer Clowns from Outer Space did not help that because those things look scary. Oh, and I do want to point out the extra touch that they had on the masks of making the lips look wet it's that extra little touch that adds creep factor to that costuming, and I love that. I think it's it's particularly gross, and it works extremely well, in my opinion. So awesome. Uh, the guy who played the, I, I, think, I think he was supposed to be the sheriff, Mooney, was played by a guy named John Vernon. I loved him in that role. He was such a curmudgeon -y, terrible person. He was just like, he hated the whole town. He especially hated kids. He was trying to do everything he could to not work, to not do his job. He's literally drinking on the job, smoking a cigar and reading his gun magazine, and literally ignoring all the calls coming into the police department because people are having problems. Now, granted, within the context of the film, it's because he's like, oh, everyone's trying to pull a prank on me, saying all these clowns are invading the town, and he thinks it's BS. But here's the thing. you got to answer those calls. Because one of those calls may be a murder or something. You know, this is the, the moment of, like, taking yourself out of what's going on with the actual movie and looking at it from his perspective. Like, he actually believes that people are trying to prank him with this clown thing. But he would also have to believe that he still needs to answer that phone because there could be an actual problem somewhere that someone's trying to call in about. So the fact that like his the, all the phones are going crazy, like every line, and you see it, like the multiple lines are all blanking on the phone, and he's just like kick back at his desk, smoking a stogie, and reading his gun magazine, and he's all like, hey, all these people in this town. He literally hates everyone, and he's like, I'm not going to help anyone out. It's terrible. Okay, so... Uh, Already talked about Deb being the smart one who says we shouldn't do this. Uh, love all the gadgets, love the designs. Obviously, a lot of people cite the popcorn gun in this film, and there's a big reason that they cite the popcorn gun. That's because information came out that that was the most expensive of all, all the props to make. It was $7,000 to make it because it actually works. They wanted to create a working popcorn gun that would shoot popcorn. You see it used a few times in this, and then the popcorn becomes it's basically like eggs for the baby clowns it's kind of weird but um cool at the same time so the uh yeah so that popcorn gun not only was it seven thousand dollars to make but it took six weeks to make that thing that's crazy i hope somebody still has it somewhere and they're able to you know take it out on the weekends and shoot some popcorn somewhere because for that amount of money and that amount of time into it someone's got to have it still probably one of the kyoto brothers i would assume um there's clever comedy throughout this, uh, all involving like clown and circus related stuff. And it is impressive to me that they're able to keep that going throughout the film. Like I was saying, like it doesn't really slow down. They keep doing more and more practical effects. There's more and more like clever, comedic clown and, and circus related stuff that just keeps going and going and going. And it just doesn't slow down really until the very end. And then they're just like, it's over. Um, so pacing is extremely good with this film. And I like that. Uh, when the, initially when the, when the clowns start heading out into the town, you're just like, here we go. This is where the fun starts. Even if you haven't seen the movie before, you're like, I know this is where the fun's going to start. Because when the aliens, these clown aliens start interacting with 
people who don't know what they are, that's when the fun starts. And I think one of my favorite, like a lot of people will kind of cite what their favorite kills in this scene, in this uh, film are. And I think mine might be the, um, the shadow puppet one where he's like doing all these shadow puppets for these old people waiting at a bus stop. And then it turns into a big T-Rex and then actually eats them. That's a really fun scene. And when you're watching it the first time, very unexpected to be honest. Uh, but there's a lot of that type of stuff. I also quite like the ventriloquist act with uh, Mooney. And after the clown's done with him, how he pulls his hand out and it's covered in blood. And he just like flicks all the blood off. Uh, just they're nice little touches in this film like that. And I love it. You become aware pretty early that there is almost no plot in this. But you don't care because it's all about the clowns and their antics. This much is true. And if you're watching this and you disagree with that... Put a comment down there, although I think most people probably wouldn't disagree with that. Uh, there are, oh, I was already saying, there are plenty of alien invasion films. You have to make your mark somehow. Obviously, Killer Clowns from Outer Space made their mark. Which, by the way, the name was originally just going to be Killer Clowns for the film. But they decided to change it to Killer Clowns from Outer Space so people didn't think in, that it was actually going to be a slasher film instead. So they wanted people to know up front... It's an alien invasion film, basically, but they're clowns. So you're going to get what you are being told it's going to be, basically. So that was kind of smart. Uh, and it actually kind of hit cult status very quickly. I did, I'm pretty sure it never came out in theaters. It was a VHS and DVD release only. Uh, I remember when I was a really young kid and I was out on vacation somewhere staying in a hotel. Uh, my parents had left the room and my sisters and I were just like flipping channels and it was on TV. And so that was my first, like, little taste. I didn't see the whole thing, but that was my first little taste of Killer Clowns from Outer Space. So that later on in my life, I was like, what was that movie? I gotta f find that and watch it. And I quite liked it. So the ice cream truck driving Terenzi brothers in this film are actually pretty annoying. They're kind of um, Three Stooges-esque, which I don't really like in this. They're a little over the top and they're a little annoying. So less of them would have been nice. Um... Because you don't need them. You have all those clowns. Like, that's the draw. That's what it's all about. Like, when the humans are on screen in this film, unless they're being killed and or chased, you don't care about them. You're just like, get the humans off the screen. More clowns, please. Unless you're afraid of clowns. Okay, so actually, my favorite part in the film, period, is the exploration of the, um, of the fun house at the very end. Because... It's one of those things where, like, what's next? It's, you know, things keep coming. Every room is designed differently. It's a lot of fun to see what they are going to throw at you. And uh, it's just a good time. I like exploration-type things in, in films, and this one's particularly good. I also really like, when they're in the funhouse, the crazy straw, uh, or as I would call it, the super crazy straw, because it's um, very unnecessarily elaborate as a crazy straw when the, the one clown just like sticks it into that big cotton candy ball where the dead bodies are and just sucks a bunch of blood out it's a pretty gross moment for people but uh i think it's really funny and um the super crazy straw is a good touch too and that's what i'm talking about there's like all these little extra touches that they put into the film that i really appreciate i really do uh it feel, yeah, it feels like it keeps building as it just gets crazier and crazier. There's really not much downtime. Like I was saying, the pacing is so good for this. Uh, so uh, in the end, they I know a lot of people have probably heard that there was supposed to be a sequel for this. It kind of got stuck in um, what people call like production hell where, you know, you can't find a backer for it. No one wants to take it, blah, blah, blah. So apparently, and actually I remember hearing about a sequel – they're going to be doing a sequel for more than 10 years now, so it's been getting kicked around for a while. There apparently has been a script for it, to be honest, um, and I've heard that the script is, it has something to do with the main character guy played by Grant Kramer. That It's like 30 years later, and he's kind of like the town wacko because no one believes that the clown thing ever happened, um, and he's... Uh, training like street performers in the town to take on the clowns when they come back that's what i read i don't know if that's true but it sounds fun and i'd love to see it but apparently last year the sci-fi channel came out and said that they 
were t in talks to try and purchase the the rights to do the either the sequel film or a mini series to to air on sci-fi so i was like oh that sounds good but then i also read something that said just this august in 2019 that fox had come out and said they had plans to make the sequel movie for killer clowns from outer space but then when they were purchased by Disney, Disney canceled it along with like 200 other titles that were in the works. So who knows? You know, we may never get the sequel. I really hope we do because I would really like to see what the Kyoto brothers would do with like more of these clown jokes, more kills, more practical effects. I assume they would still do practical effects and not go CG. I would really hope so. But um, yeah, hopefully we get that sequel. But I like this film quite a bit. It's not like a great film, but for a mindless film that's just kind of fun to watch and very visually pleasing, I recommend it. Um, so that leads me to trying to give it a star rating. <sighs> okay, so I'm going to rate it two ways. Uh, the first is in the pantheon of all films, out of five stars with half stars in play. What do I think it is? It's probably a two-star film in that sense, especially because there's really no story to it. But the practical effects kind of bring it up. There's a lot put into the production of it. So two stars. But when you step back and you're kind of like stupid, uh, mindless, fun type horror invasion film, I'm going to give it mm, three and a half stars. Because once again, there's not a whole lot of plot to it. Uh, it's pretty mindless, but the practical effects get it to that three and a half stars in my opinion. So there you have it. Thanks for checking this out. Hopefully you guys like this review that I've done. Uh, hope you like all my reviews, or some of them, uh, hit that subscribe if you can for me. Really helps me out a lot. Literally takes a second for you. Totally painless, but that's the way you can repay me. Uh, put some comments down there. Tell me your thoughts. Tell me your favorite kills in uh, Killer Clowns from Outer Space, or your favorite clown designs, actually, if you want to do that. Your favorite moment, period, from Killer Clowns from Outer Space. But let's talk. Thanks for checking this out, and until next time, keep it brutal.